Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief on April Fool's Day at about 7 p.m. A manager in the White House Personnel Security Office told the House Oversight Committee that senior Trump officials granted security clearances to at least 25 people whose applications had been denied by career employees. The whistleblower said she spoke to Congress because her attempts to raise concerns went nowhere at the White House and that she believed it was, quote, my last hope to really bring the integrity back into our office. Elijah Cummings, the head of the Oversight Committee, said he's prepared to authorize subpoenas as soon as tomorrow to order the White House to comply with a probe into whether national security was put at risk. No names were released today, but the whistleblower indicated that two of those denied are current senior White House officials. Earlier reports have claimed Trump had to order his then chief of staff to grant a clearance to Jared Kushner. President Trump demanded that Congress work to fix the immigration crisis and that it, quote, get it done now. He retweeted threats to close the U.S. border with Mexico and is reportedly considering naming an immigration czar. Homeland Security Secretary Nielsen has ordered the immediate redeployment of 750 Customs and Border Protection officers to border patrol duties, saying the number could top 2,000. She also ordered more migrants return to Mexico to wait out their asylum claims. A border closure could cause immediate negative consequences to U.S. consumers and businesses because Mexico is America's third largest trading partner. U.S. automakers depend on parts manufactured there. Most U.S. vegetable imports and almost half of fruit imports come from Mexico, so prices would soar and grocery shoppers could see some empty shelves. Also, it may not stem the increasing influx of migrants because many don't come across at official entry points. Closing the border might be another example of the White House's lack of political discipline and inability to cement a win. Last week, instead of seizing the good news from the Mueller report, Trump changed the focus to health care, an issue that's usually better for Democrats. And now that border apprehensions support his claims of a humanitarian crisis on the border, something many Democrats had denied, he pushes his policies to a point rejected by even many of his supporters in the business world. House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler says his committee will authorize a subpoena this week to obtain the full unredacted Mueller report. Attorney General Barr had promised to deliver the report by mid-April, but with redactions he believes are required by law. The rush to release is understandable because people want to see what Mueller found. But this is a political stunt. Barr is legally prevented from releasing certain information, including secret grand jury proceedings. If a subpoena is issued, the battle will head to the courts. Five major U.S. airlines suffered a system-wide outage this morning. The problem was related to flight planning software. Hundreds of flights were delayed. Southwest took the worst hit, with 25% of its schedule affected. American, United, Delta, and Alaska Airlines all had issues. They say the extremes meet, but that happens less often than you'd think. One exception is how the extreme right and left are both enthusiastically attacking former Vice President Joe Biden. A Democratic Nevada, politi Nevada politician, Lucy Flores, has claimed that Biden inappropriately kissed her on the back of her head. It's highlighted his often overly affectionate manner with women, one that has led to viral internet compilations, often referring, referring to creepy Uncle Joe in their titles. Some of his opponents for the Democratic nomination in 2020, if he joins the race, have said they believe Flores. Today, a second woman is accusing Biden of touching her inappropriately at a fundraiser, even though she says it wasn't sexual. Biden has issued two statements. The latest says that in all his years of campaigning, quote, not once, never, did I believe I acted inappropriately. If it is suggested that I did so, I will listen respectfully, but it was never my intention. A Biden spokesperson issued a sharp statement today, calling interpretations of old photos ugly urban legends. I don't mean to make light about the very serious issue of Brexit, but British lawmakers have achieved new levels of almost comedic failure. Their failure to agree on anything reminds me of when my family decides to go out to dinner. I'll suggest a handful of restaurants, all of which they reject. Then they don't suggest an alternative and then get angry at me for not choosing a good one. 
Well, the House of Commons rejected four Brexit options today. Last week, the MPs, for the third time, soundly defeated the deal negotiated between Prime Minister Theresa May and the EU. They also turned down eight other proposals, including a close vote on a new Brexit referendum. Now, May has until April 12th to seek a longer extension from the EU, which it may not give, figure out a different course, or crash out of the Union altogether with a no-deal Brexit, which is potentially catastrophic and might have worldwide implications. A comedian who plays a teacher who becomes the president on TV has easily taken the top spot in Ukraine's presidential election. That puts Volodymyr Zelensky in a strong position to win a runoff in three weeks, where his opponent will be the second place finisher, current president Petro Poroshenko. If the political neophyte succeeds, he would lead the largest all-European country and a crucial player in the new Cold War with Russia. He would also follow in the footsteps of Jimmy Morales, a comedian who is now Guatemala's president. Further proving that it is better to be quiet and have people think you're a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez claimed incorrectly that Republicans amended the Constitution quote, to make sure Roosevelt didn't get reelected. It's her latest historical mistake, but she's far from the only one. Trump and other politicians are constantly rewriting history and rarely issue an apology. But this one's a whopper of an error. The 22nd Amendment didn't pass until after Roosevelt was dead. It was a bipartisan, not Republican measure in Congress, and it was overwhelmingly ratified in state legislatures. Also, is she actually arguing that there should not be term limits for the U.S. presidency? That followed another whopper on Fox News. The network's Sunday morning show displayed a headline that said, quote, Trump cuts U.S. aid to three Mexican countries. We didn't realize that Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador were Mexican countries. At least Fox apologized. Duke lost in a big upset to Michigan State, and Auburn stunned Kentucky, so they will join Virginia and Texas Tech in the Final Four of the NCAA, NCAA's Men's Basketball Championship. Both semifinals are on Saturday. And Tom Brady joined Twitter today. The star quarterback proceeded to blow up the social media giant. Despite endlessly saying he wants to play until he's 45, he tweeted that he was retiring. New England Patriots fans everywhere promptly started hyperventilating. His April Fool's prank made for a great Twitter debut. He's already hit 190,000 followers, even though he only started tweeting about six hours ago. We have all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week at newsandnews.com, where you'll find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. Please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and follow me on Twitter at Amora TV. Have a great evening. I will see you again tomorrow.